Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today in this reaction video, I'm very curious. LeBron James, he opens up about losing to the Nuggets. The Lakers almost got swept. They lost in five games. And I'm curious, you know, Darvin Ham gets fired. Um, a lot of the players off the bench didn't play well. And the you know the Nuggets own them. And at the same time, Timberwolves are beating the brakes off the Nuggets. So I'm just curious to see what LeBron has to say about this. Also, this is the first time me listening to his podcast. So I'm curious, you know, how he talks on this. But hey, Without further ado, let's get into this video. And for more reaction videos like this, make sure to like this video. Let's see what we're talking about. Today, and I was looking back at like every single year, um, the common emotions when the season ended and some unique emotions depending on which team I was on. You've obviously won a championship. So I don't know what those emotions are like, but what what can you just describe what the end of the season is like. Uh, well, look, can we cheers first before oh, we yeah, even... You're right, you're right, my bad. Can we, can we cheer, yeah. cheers? Cheers, cheers, um, cheers. Shit. Cheers, Where am I emotionally right now? Um, cheers. I don't know, to be honest. I have no idea why I am emotionally right now. Um, you know, obviously, you know, going against the defending champions in the first round is always going to be a difficult challenge. We knew that coming into it. But fuck, we had so many opportunities, man. You know, yeah. to lose in five, two of them being game winners by, uh, you know, Jamal, you know, his greatness. <laughs> you know, but we had so many opportunities. Obviously, I being up. up, you know, 20, you know, in game uh, game two, and they're building and losing that game and um, having so many opportunities in other games, you just feel like, shit, if one play here, one play there, you know, could have made a whole of a difference. But, you know, when you're playing against a, a team like that, you have zero room for error. And I believe we made too many errors um, in, in, in some of the games. Like, I mean, I've seen some crazy ass stat about like the minutes that we were leading in the series compared to losing in the series. But we both know that's a little bit of uh, fool's gold because most playoff games come down to one or two, three or four possessions, you know, and. Quick pause. LeBron James at one point was never a first round, never lost in the first round. So. It's interesting seeing him being a first round exit, you know, a couple times the last couple of years. Yeah, them games were close, man. Y'all had some really, you know, great opportunities. I don't think y'all would have won. Maybe it could have been a six or seven game series, but, you know, maybe the Nuggets were playing with their food. I don't know. And uh, if you're not able to capitalize off those possessions or make plays during those possessions, then that's how you lose games. So, <clears throat> you know, emotionally, I feel like we was like right there, obviously, in, in, in every game to be able to steal a game. But also at the same time, you know, we were, and, and that's why we we was, we lost the series. And shit hurts, obviously. You, you know, being a competitor, I am competitor. You are. You've been in multiple series in, in your career as well. But fuck, man, I feel like you know, a couple plays here, a couple plays there. You know, we could have we could have won the series, but the better team won. The better team won for sure. Give credit where credit is due. Yeah, the better team won, boy. You don't think you might win that? That's good, eh? At least he said that. Um, I don't know. Does this loss hurt him? Is it like it hurts, but comparing to other losses in his career, he's taken some tough losses, especially Golden State. I know those losses probably resonate more. Um, I mean, losing to the Nuggets, getting owned by the Nuggets is a new challenge for LeBron's like new challenge for LeBron. Whenever like he faced Golden State, he had to get past that challenge. Now he has this challenge, but he, he, right now he's very almost forty. Like he's not. I don't think he's ever gonna get past that challenge. And if the Lakers ever got past the Nuggets, they was they on they was going to die against Minnesota. No answer for that. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, I want to go back to the to the singular play thing in a second, but you know, I was thinking about the 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 come down of the season, <clears throat> and I was having a conversation with someone who's worked in the NBA a long time a couple weeks ago. We were talking about uh, the stress levels. Mm -hmm. of uh, different uh, positions within the NBA, right? You know, front <laughs> office, coaching, players, all that. Yeah. And I, I feel like as a player, you're always on edge during the season. Always. You're, 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 there's no, like, comfort level. You're, yeah. The intensity, even just, like, uh, going to dinner uh, with friends, you're, you're still like wired thinking about thinking the game. Of, yeah. 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 Yeah, yep. yeah. And then, and I think when the season ends, that was always the weirdest transition. There's certainly sometimes anger. There's certainly sadness. Like that, those emotions yeah. are there, but it's like, 
I know this sounds fucking weird, man, but sometimes when the season would end, I would be like, okay, I need to figure out how I can re-enter society. Because <laughs> I've, had, I've had to yeah. be on for the yeah. last seven, eight months. Seven, eight, eight nine months. <laughs> yep, for sure. Yep, you're absolutely right, man. And uh, he, he had it nine months because he'd been in the finals all the time. Like, no, you seven, eight, I'm nine. Um, that's an interesting take, though. Yeah, just being on edge, being focused. I feel like in my career, I have some similar to that. Just always being like locked into what I have to do. Um, obviously, these people is significantly more pressure than me. But I, you know, there's there is some kind of kind of resonate with that, but. Obviously, I'm not an NBA player. I, I think what you said is important, and this is not an excuse for the Lakers. It's not. What you said is important. Denver is the better team. As an analyst, I would have told you that yesterday. I would have told you that four months ago. Hey, LeBron, De- I think Denver's a better team than you guys. Like, I, I would just be honest with you. I, I You have played hurts them two for years in a row. That hurts. That hurts for him. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I guess. We have I spent feel. some time on Jokic. He's certainly part of the puzzle, a big part of the puzzle. What makes the Denver Nuggets puzzle so hard to solve? Great question. Um, I, I think you know, obviously, it starts with Joker, obviously. Um, but I don't think Jamal Murray gets enough credit. Um, you know, be, you know, he's not a part of the. He loved playing the Lakers. He's struggling against Minnesota. Struggling. Play Lakers boy, he on one every time. You know, all NBA conversation discourse. He's not a part of the I'm an all-star every year discourse. You know, all that shit. And I think, you know, people get caught up and just thinking it's just Joker. Joker, Joker. How do you stop Joker? Man, when it comes to nut crunching time, yes, Joker gonna make a lot of plays. But it's that motherfucker, Jamal Murray, that will send you home and I and I'm a victim of it, you know, and he just makes plays. He he it's a sense of calmness when the ball is in his hand and they're and they're working that that either that side, clear side, one five pick and roll, or that mid pick and roll, or that angle pick and roll. Teach me basketball. Pick and roll half court set off the slot with shooters on the opposite slot and in both corners. Angle pick and roll. Are they teaching me stuff? That's interesting. Teach me stuff. He's either handling and joker setting it or he's playing a touch game to Joker where he has the he could come off full speed. He has the ability to go back door. He's so shifty to step backs, going right. You know, it's not you can't even you can't even dictate which way, you know, you know how you can see, okay, this guy shoots better going this this way. This guy shoots off the dribble going this way. Well, he hit two game winners on us in the series. One was a step back going right, other one was a step back going left. So what do you, what the fuck do you do? And yes, we could have played. The last one a little bit better defensively, uh, but that's a that's a different story. And then to add on, to we, the- we break that down on the podcast. We literally on the podcast break down the play and how they could have played that better. Y'all should check that podcast. Check that episode out. Those two guys, Michael Porter Jr. is a fucking laser. I don't know if it's just because he sees the Lakers or the the gold or whatever, but I feel like versus. That motherfucker don't miss. He does I not call, miss. I, I called the one game where he literally did not miss. In, in, <laughs> yeah, in LA. He literally did not miss. He literally did not miss. And I, I, I was like, man, this, he's, you, you can't even get, you know how they say, close the gap, get to his chest. He, he doesn't even see you. He doesn't see you. And then those, those other two guys, man, you, you got KCP out there, a guy who just, who's just a winner, who makes winning plays. He could have zero points. He can have 15 points and he's going to make, excuse me, make an impact on a game. And the same with Aaron Gordon. You know, Aaron Gordon, if he has two points or if he has 20 points, his impact doesn't change. He's going to rebound. He's going to stay. He knows his role. He's going to be in a dunker. He's going to slash from the baseline. You know, he's going to guard. Um, I just think they're, they're super uh, well, well, well um, organized as a group. And then um, obviously, you know, their, their, their coaching staff is, is, is pretty damn good on knowing you know, with their strengths, and they go to their strengths. They avoid their weakness. You know, they avoid their weakness. It's not me. What's their weakness? I don't know. Nikola Jokic is, has not been playing good defense in this postseason. Maybe that's – I mean, obviously Minnesota is showing them their weaknesses. Um, I mean, I'll I watch a little more of this and then we'll 
See, the difference between great teams, good teams, and bad teams Tell is me. the how many possessions can you go throughout the course of the game that meant absolutely nothing. Meaning a great team won't go through too many games where they had terrible possessions where it was like, what the fuck are we doing? Where a, a, a great team would never throw the ball into the post to a guy and we're going to expect him to score if that's not what the fuck he do. A great team would never run a pick and roll with a player if he's not a pick and roll player. That's where the great, the good, and the bad lies. Denver, they know what their strengths are. And it's not nobody on that floor that does something that they shouldn't be doing. And I, I think that's what makes, I think that's what ultimately makes a great team. I'm going to leave it right there because that's a really great spot to um, like to stop it. Um, a lot of really great points. This is actually a really good podcast because they're actually trying to teach you basketball, and I definitely should uh, listen to this more. Yeah, the Denver Nuggets, that's a great point. Like, they have efficient, just their possessions are efficient. Um, you don't want to just waste possessions, especially in the playoffs. You want to make sure what you're doing is, like, you have a purpose to everything you do out there on the court. Uh, Minnesota, when you compare Minnesota and the Lakers, bro, the, Minnesota just has significantly better – personnel than the Lakers do right they have the personnel but they have almost similar to the 2020 Lakers where they had a great personnel to be able to stop the Nuggets and maybe that version of the Lakers could be the team that could have stopped the Nuggets um the Lakers looking at this Minnesota team they need to see find a way to go back and get the 2020 Lakers obviously not the same players but people with similar skill sets and see what it goes because that's the boogeyman for you and Minnesota is handling them. I don't know if Minnesota should win the series. Maybe the Nuggets pull off a 2021 Clippers and, you know, win both games in Minnesota. I don't know. But, you know, hey, that that's some really good analysis. So th this was really a great video to watch and listen to. This is actually a really good podcast. Them boys got 600, almost 600K subscribers. LeBron James makes sense. But, hey, if y'all want to see more reaction videos to podcasts, videos, whatever, make sure to like this video. It's the road to 1,000 subscribers. All the support. I'm definitely loving it. And, hey, I'm going to catch you on the next video. And I'm out of here. Peace.